Hello, I'm Scott DuPont with another episode of Finance Your Movie, sharing tips and strategies to help you fund your independent feature, documentary, short film, or web series. Our mission is to empower you to get your money to tell your story. Hi, I'm here today. It's a great privilege to have Rick Pamplin on the line with us. And uh, for those of you who might not know, um, Rick, I'm going to ask you to just, if you could, in just one, one or two minutes to encapsulate your Hollywood part of this story, how you ended up at Universal Studios Florida, and then where you are now, just for our audience. All right. Thank you for having me, Scott. Uh, I grew up in Michigan loving movies. Uh, and was going to University of Michigan Flint, editing the newspaper there. And one summer, I decided to go out to Hollywood, fell in love with it, uh, and never came back to Michigan, except to get my possessions. Uh, I first started off as an actor, studying with Lee Strasberg in different places. Uh, I did a lot of extra work. And then I really realized I really wanted to write and create movies so I took a lot of screenwriting courses, uh, wrote screenplays, worked as an extra, did every job you can imagine, and kind of worked my way up, uh, eventually uh, getting a master's degree in screenwriting, and of course finishing my bachelor's degree. And then I was, of course, homeless, starving to death. And then after that, uh, I eventually sold, my very first big sale was a project that I sold was a finished spec script that ultimately got made and released by Universal, uh, which I wrote with another writer. Uh, and then I eventually went out on my own and sold a project to Disney, uh, which was a high concept comedy. And then I worked for about nine years with a guy uh, who was extremely successful at pitching projects to studios. I sold to Warner Brothers, uh, I sold to Disney, I sold to a lot of the major studios, uh, and I taught screenwriting in that period, uh, which was a great way to connect with people. Then I directed an independent feature film that I raised all the money for myself, uh, and it was, it was on cable, it was in Blockbuster, it was a direct-to-video film that was one of the very first breakthroughs. Uh, we did enormously well financially with it, and Ultimately, I wanted to really be a filmmaker and an independent filmmaker. And through a whole series of circumstances, um, I ended up coming to Florida and I interviewed with Disney and I interviewed with Universal and they both offered me deals. And uh, Universal had a better setup, I felt, for independent filmmakers. And I ended up being at Universal Studios uh, for, I think, 14 years, something like that. Uh, where I worked on major movies there like Waterboy with Adam Sandler. I also did my own films, did a lot of consulting. Uh, and then I left there to go completely independent. Uh, and then that's how I ended up in South Florida, where I'm now completely on my own and deliriously happy. Great. Thank you so much, Rick. I think that's uh, helpful for our listeners. <coughs> Excuse me. So as I mentioned to you, our audience, the focus <clears throat> we're really trying to um, really dig deep and hone in on is the truly independent people that are not going to go out and pitch the studios because they're not buying as many scripts as they used to, but people that are going to do it themselves. They're going to raise the money, a couple hundred thousand dollars, maybe a million dollars or so, you know, in the low budget genre. And everyone, and, and you're most well known out here, even to this day, as, as a very successful writer, um, everyone says it always starts with a script. So in terms of an independent filmmaker starting out, talk a little bit about why that's critically important and how that will help them attract investors. Well, I think, I think all fundraising starts with an idea, a concept, a treatment and a screenplay. And if it's a documentary, you know, it's an outline. And if it's a spec script, it's a completed, you know, first draft screenplay or maybe even a shooting draft of the screenplay. And, you know, my master's work is in screenwriting. And I figured of all of the things I could pursue, 
if you can write, if you can create material that people want to put money in and ultimately people want to see and pay money or watch on television or go to a movie theater or watch it on streaming, you're going to have the strongest possible position in the industry. So writing is really, even though writers are generally not respected in the Hollywood system, I think as an independent, it's much more important that you have to have material that is compelling and you have to figure out who your audience is, what your story is, what you want, who you want to reach, who's the end user. But I think it all begins and ends with writing, with a great idea, a great concept, a great treatment, a great outline, a great screenplay. And that's really, I've made a living in this business for several you know, decades. I've had great successes, I've had some failures, but it's always been to me about the writing. And there's a very old cliche, Scott, I'm sure many of your listeners have heard, but if it's not on the page, it's not on the stage. It's very, very hard to create a great piece of cinema or, you know, any, you know, story, short story, anything, if it's not on the page. Now, you can take a great script and make a lousy movie, but it's very hard to take a lousy script and make a great movie. That rarely happens. So since you and and all the people I have on this podcast, I want to make sure for our audience that you know, these are all real people that have done what you said you've done, and you're, you're a pro- prolific writer, but you've also taken your scripts, raised money, a lot of money, a good amount of money for uh, independent, and actually produced them and got distribution. So I'm going to drill down and ask a few questions about taking the script, which you have really, really polished, and then the next steps to fundraising. So first question I have, and I'm, I'm, I'm interested to hear your take on this, is do you, after the business plan, do you send all your potential investors a copy of the script and let them digest it? No, I actually think it's very unhealthy to let an investor read an entire screenplay. Most of them are not familiar with the format and the elements of what makes a successful screenplay. What I provide them with is the log line, uh, the synopsis, which is, you know, like the 30 second pitch and a detailed treatment. The treatment would be anywhere from one page to 20 pages because that's really what the story is. And a, a motion picture screenplay is a blueprint. It's a very unique form of writing and a lot of people don't understand it. A lot of people are confused. Uh, So my position with the investors has always been, I'll give you a sample script I've written. Uh, I had a screenplay that was considered to be in the running for an Academy Award nomination. We were nominated on the ballot of the Motion Picture Academy Awards, but not the final five. But the uh, Margaret Herrick Library requested a copy for their permanent collection which with all of the great scripts of Hitchcock and Truffaut and all that, which was a great honor for me. And so, you know, I say, look, I'll, I have this letter from the Motion Picture Academy. I have a degree. I'll give you the script that would, you know, this is a caliber of my writing, but on a particular project, I like to present them with anywhere from a one page to a 20 page treatment. And most investors appreciate that. They, you know, they really don't want to sit down for two hours and, read a screenplay and you know and in a screenplay there's you know technical jargon and uh there's all kinds of you know i just a real quick story scott uh, one of the great people that i've worked with and met uh, through the years is jim cameron and you know arguably the most commercial filmmaker you know uh, certainly on a par with steven spielberg with terminator and avatar and titanic and so when when we were getting started together I asked Jim one time if he could send me a copy of the Terminator script. I said, you know, I really like the film. We, I had hosted a screening at University of Southern California uh, with Jim and Gail Ann Hurd. We loved the film. The audience was very responsive. So Jim sent me this script and it was all in very small type. It was, it was very hard to read and it had all of these technical terms. 
And I said, I, I, I called him up and I said, Jim, I, I don't even know what some of these technical terms are. Why is your script like this? And he said, I don't want anybody to understand what I'm doing. And I don't want the studio to be able to understand it. I just want to be able to show him I wrote the script. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's another famous story, Peter Bogdanovich, who was a, a very big director when he made a lot of hit movies like Last Picture Show, and What's Up Doc, and Paper Moon. You know, Peter was notorious for writing one script for investors and then another script that he was actually shooting. And I, I don't believe in that. I, I don't think that's good. I don't know if that's true. I, I just think you should be very honest with your investors and, uh, you know, show them a really detailed treatment, the log line, what exactly you're going to make, but I don't think they need to see the full script. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Rick, 100% um, for, the, for the main reason you mentioned, which is, you know, most of your potential investors, they're not professional screenwriters. They're, they're not in the business. So if I want an amateur's opinion, I'll go talk to the, you know, the, the peanut gallery. The other reason, and this is for our, for our audience, is when I'm sending out the business plan, which is really the, the Bible, um, you know, that, that can take half an hour to glance through. There's a lot of other things you're looking at. The last thing I want to do is give my potential investor another reason why I can't follow up with them. Because they're going to say, oh, Scott, I haven't had three or four hours to read the script. I've been really, really busy. So it's almost like you're giving them extra homework and you're creating more objections. Right. And one point that's very uh, important, Scott, I made my career with my spec script. And we, we wrote this script. I wrote it with another writer. And three days out of the then typewriter, which I guess dates us, uh, we sold it. We optioned it. For seven or eight years, we lived on option money from people wanting to make the movie. They gave us money up front, and then they had the right to make the movie. Eventually, the movie got made. I think it took about eight years. And then we got big checks. And the film came out. The film was not very good. And so a lot of people would say to me down the road, investors, hey, I saw that movie. It wasn't very good. I said it was terrible. But the script's great. And I would show people my spec script. My number one advice to anybody wanting to raise money, and, and also a good question for an investor to ask, where's your spec script? If you don't have a spec script that you can show people a sample of your work, then you're not going to get very far. And if, if an investor's considering giving money to someone and they don't have a spec script, I'd be a little bit suspicious. And my point is, people would see this movie and say, wow, I know Universal released it. I see it, but I don't like the movie. I'd say, I don't either. Here, read my script. And then they would read that spec script and go, wow, yeah, okay, we get it. We know why you want to be a director now. So a spec script will serve you your entire career. And I still show that script. I still show it to people uh, to this day. It's a great example. So have a sample of your work, but not necessarily maybe the film you're making. Good, good, uh, good point. And uh, you, had, you had mentioned Logline. Um, if you would share with us, uh, I, I know one of the films you're most passionate about is Crime Busters. Uh, if you could share what the Logline is in, in that. Well, Crime Busters is a film I worked on many, many years. And it's a film I really wanted to make that my son came up with. It was his idea. But it was about a bunch of kids that helped the police solve crimes. And it's a little bit like Little Rascals meets Police Academy. Boom. And That's what I was looking for. Little Rascals meets Police Academy. Right. One of the great ways you pitch a movie is you cross two successful movies. This is something I learned from my ex-partner when we used to sell movies to the studios. When you sell a movie to a studio, they like you to cross two successful films so they can understand it quickly. And the log line is what used to be in what was TV Guide. But today, when I go on the streaming services, you know, no matter what you say about a movie, Scott, every streaming services breaks that movie down to one sentence. And that's what's called a log line. And that is what you have to sell the public. And I spend hours on HBO, Hulu, Epics, you know, Showtime, 
all of these, you know, Amazon studying what are people watching, what are the one line log lines, because every movie ultimately ends up being sold to the public with a one sentence log line, which my point is, that's where your movie begins. And you should spend more time developing that one line pitch than anything you do with the movie, because ultimately that's what sells it to the public. And, and that powerful log line you just mentioned is a powerful pitch to investors. I couldn't agree more. Rick, I, uh, I'm just looking at the clock. I am heartbroken. We're running out of time here. Um, I want to thank you very, very much because I know you're right now working on selling one of your films and you've got another project in development after that. But is there any way that I could bring you back on next week? Because I'd love to talk to you about um, pitching documentaries. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. So thanks again, Rick. And uh, stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, tune in next week. And uh, we'll have Rick Pamplin back one more time. Thank you so much. Tune in next week. Or for more info, visit financeyourmovie.com. Thank you for listening. And remember, if you have a story to tell the world, never give up on your dream. Copyright Nemours Marketing.